Okay, first off, on the brooding scale from Edward to Batman, Ruby Runaways and Stowaways ranks a solid cloud. The episode begins with Blake on a boat, headed to Menagerie. Meanwhile, on the Yellow Rose homestead, Yang is feeling down in the dumps, and not even a shiny new Terminator arm from General Awesome can cheer her up. Anyway, back at sea, the boat is attacked by a dragon-like Grim. Blake's gonna need a bigger boat. Nah, all she needs to save the day is a monkey boy over here. Oh, also, Darth Treya is teaching her apprentice how to control some thing which is trying to eat her arm and possibly the rest of her. And she can give orders via these little Metroid guys. This episode rocks. The meat and potatoes of the story is the character development with Blake and Yang. Both are badly wounded after their fight with Adam, and they're both, in their own way, running away from their problems. My what insightful psychological analysis. I admire your ability to grasp the blindingly obvious. Thanks, I think. Anyway, Yang is escaping her problems by sinking into apathy. She's clearly scared and depressed and can't face going back out there yet. Wounds of the mind are just as crippling as wounds of the body. Hopefully having dear old dad around will help her get over this slump. Blake, on the other hand, is running in a more literal sense. She's headed back home to Menagerie for as of yet unspecified reasons. But she's clearly done trying to fit in, as symbolized by her throwing her bow away. Also like Yang, she has a tow-headed ray of hope for getting back into the fight in the form of Sun. The action scene which dominates the latter half of the episode was really quality stuff. The dragon is cool, there's lots of mid-air action, both Blake and Sun get to do stuff. And the ship had actual guns. Exactly. I was so happy to see the ship and her crew contribute to the fight. The basic problem is that the monster won't hold still long enough for the ship's big gun to finish it off. And that twist made for a really compelling on-screen fight. I was less impressed with the ending bit involving the bad guys. Clearly there's something going on with Cinder's new powers. What exactly, I can't say, other than it looks painful. For her part, Salem shows the first burst of genuine anger that we've seen out of her. And it's related to both Cinder and Ozpin. She's also searching for some sort of relic. This could be connected to the Four Maidens, the Wizard, the Silver-Eyed Warriors, or none of the above. They are sort of dangling clues in front of your nose with this stuff, and that can be a little bit irritating. Okay, now it's time to break down the good and the bad in Ruby, Runaways, and Stowaways. On the good side, there's great character development for our leading ladies, as well as an awesome fight scene with a cool monster. On the downside, it was a little bit too easy to guess that the cloaked figure following Blake was Sun, and the ending stuff with the villains was a little bit frustrating. But this is still a great episode, so I give Ruby, Runaways and Stowaways, a 4.5 out of 5. Now if you're interested in more reviews of anime, movies, TV shows, comic books, and video games, check out my channel on YouTube at StupidPrivate913, or find my Facebook and DeviantArt pages for video updates and more. Thank you for watching. Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private!